Hey Killer Bees, it's Paula B from PaulaBFitness.com and on tap today, it's the March to 10K where we are training for a 10K this month. And today is Sunday Run Day. We're getting things popping today with a 5K in under 30 minutes. I know, that's a good challenge for us, but it's also a great place to start running longer distances. Now, today's workout is brought to you by my girl, Tianka, who is a very generous patron of Paula B Fitness over on Patreon. If you would like to sponsor your own workout, there is a link for Patreon down in the description. And thank you so much, Tianka, for sponsoring today. You guys, when you're ready for today's run, you know I'm ready. Let's go. All right, you guys, we are gonna get right into it. Now, here's the dealio today. We are running a 5K, and we're running it pretty fast, too. A 5K in 30 minutes or less is about a 9.39 minutes per mile pace, which is a good clip. Now, obviously, if we're running indoors, your results may vary, and I'm just running by feel. So don't worry if you get a lot more or a lot less than I do. I'm gonna have you go to do this warm up right now because I'm not gonna do one in this video and when you're ready for it here we go i'm using my watch today and it is timing us and here we go crossing the starting line <laughs> now today what we're really going to focus on is pace you'll notice that i'm not going super duper fast right out of the gate and i will tell you that i have learned from years of running and racing experience that if i go out as fast as i want to be running average pace I always peter out and have a hard time either in the middle or at the end. So I go out relatively conservatively because that gives me the opportunity to kind of get my heart rate under control, get my breathing under control, and then really get into the groove and then pick up speed later along the way. So right now, all we're doing is trying to get into that groove. We're really thinking about breathing, about getting into a nice rhythmic movement with your arms and your legs and your lungs. This should feel, you know, I hate to use the word relaxed, but running is relaxing for me. So this should feel comfortable. If it feels like your heart is pounding, if it feels like you can't quite catch your breath, slow down. It's totally okay to start off slower than you think you want to. I have started many a race at a pace that I thought, oh, I'll never get to meet my time goal if I continue like this. But then as soon as I really relaxed and got into the rhythm of it, I'm always able to speed up. It's something called negative splits. And even though that doesn't sound very good, it's exactly what you're aiming for. Negative splits means that the second half of your race is faster than the first half. And you can actually, I mean, you can measure it in a couple of different ways. It means that maybe the last mile was faster than the mile before that. There's, there's different ways you can split your run, but I'm always aiming to finish faster than I started. So feeling real good, just kind of getting into the groove. Now I will tell you, I practiced this. I know, I mean, I practice running all the time, but I actually practiced running indoors, trying to think about pace, trying to think about what kind of speed a nine and a half minute mile feels like, or just about a nine and a half minute mile feels like. And that's a pretty, a normal, natural speed for me. I do a lot of training right about that pace, and it feels pretty good, pretty comfortable. And so I was, when I was practicing, I was trying to figure out if there was any way at all that I could measure it indoors. And so I was using my watch, my fancy watch, and I cannot figure out a way to measure distance when I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and therefore, because most distance is measured by like GPS, there was no way to measure speed. Unless I get on the treadmill, but I thought that would be really, really boring for you to watch me run on a treadmill, which I don't know why, because I'm just running indoors, <laughs> so it's not really much different. But, well, the other half of that is that my treadmill is in the garage and my garage is very dirty. So I thought this would be a lot more fun to run around my living room, <laughs> or not even around, but run in my living room. <laughs> so now we are about three minutes in. This is the real reason I was wearing my watch. I'm used to kind of looking at my watch, just kind of getting a feel for where we are. So we're not quite a half a mile in. At this point, 
I usually start to feel a little bit in control. So my breathing has kind of adjusted to a rhythm. My legs have adjusted to a rhythm. Usually at this point I've heard at least one good song on my iPod, <laughs> thank goodness. I do like to run with music. It helps me really relax. I don't necessarily listen to it, of all funny things, but I do like to have it on. It gives me a little something to think about, and then I'll go off and, you know, think my own thoughts as well. Feeling good. We're starting to think, not really about picking up the pace, nearly so much as just being relaxed with it. Your shoulders should be relaxed. Hopefully you were nice and warmed up before you started running. I know sometimes I commit that running sin of getting going without warming up quite enough. That's actually the other reason why I like to start my runs just a little bit slower than I think I want to go. Because even when I do a good thorough warm up, I'm not always really thoroughly warmed up until I've gone in, you know, at least a mile or two. Sometimes I don't feel warmed up until I've run three or four. That's, a, that's what happens sometimes. You know, the longer and the more consistently you run, you'll notice that every run is the same, you know, but it's also very different. It's one of the things I like about running. The list is very long of things that I like, but I enjoy the sameness. I enjoy the routine. I enjoy the fact that I love, I run a lot of the same routes. I see a lot of the same things, but I also enjoy the fact that every single run is still teaching me something about running. It still feels different. I think different thoughts. I feel different ways. I physically feel different almost every time. It's, it's a funny exercise that is so repetitive and yet so different all at once. So now your arms are kind of starting to pump a little bit more. We're starting to think about, well, picking up the pace a little. You know, we are just about half a mile in, actually a little bit over half a mile in. So we've hopefully gotten into a nice little rhythm where you're breathing well and you're feeling relaxed. And that means that you can start to think, well, about other things, but also about running a little bit more strategically. You know, one of the hardest things for me when I first started running was to exert any real control over it. You know, I would go out for a run and the run would just do what it was gonna do. You know, my pace was wherever it was. And usually when I first started running, I just ran out of the gate as fast as I could go. And I held on to that pace for as long as I could. And that was not a super successful way of running. <laughs> I actually, well, I was a lot younger then. I was 10 years ago. So I was able to run, I was able to run a lot of the things that I wanted to run, you know, goal-wise, time goal-wise, um, pretty early on. Mostly because I set my goals not, not super out of reach. You know, when I very first started running, all my only goal in the world was really just to see what I could do. It wasn't really about time or pace. It was, it was about, can I actually run? Can I actually run to the end of this block and not die? <laughs> that, was, that was absolutely the only thing I thought of for at least the first six months. I didn't do any racing at all until, gosh, if I started running in September and my first race was in May, what is that, eight months? So I didn't do anything, I mean, other than just running around my neighborhood for eight months. And that was about how long it took me to lose the weight that I was trying to lose. So by the time I started racing, I was at, well, more or less the weight that I am now. It's different, my body's changed in 10 years. But I was more or less the weight that I am now. So I was ready to kind of tackle something different. When I first started, I really did just run for weight loss and then I realized how much I liked it. So I started setting different goals for myself, trying to go farther, trying to just think about, think about running different distances because I ran, I ran my first race, which was a 5K. And then I think it was really only two, two or three weeks later that I ran um, a six and a half mile race. It's a weird distance. It's, um, 
I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's in San Francisco. It's called the Bay to Breakers. And so it's from the bay over to the ocean. And it's a great race, the crazy race. People dress in costumes and it's huge and it's lots of fun. Um, but so that was my first like longer distance race. And I really, on both of those first two races, my only thought was just to get to the finish line without dying. I really didn't care how long it took. I think that might have even been before I had a watch that even recorded my times. So I kind of knew how long it had taken me, but I didn't really, I didn't really care. It was just exhilarating. It was just fun. And actually on both of those races, my husband ran with me, which is kind of funny because he's so much faster than me. So, so that was very nice of him to run with me for any distance at all because it's very frustrating for him to run as slow as I do. But so we did those first two races and then I don't think I ran another race for at least a couple of months after that. You know, again, I was really just focused on, on kind of trying to control my craft, trying to figure out what my body could do and how how I could make it do that. So, so I didn't really start racing like consistently and competitively for me, not like competitively in the world, like I'm super fast, but competitively for me, trying to get better each time, trying to do my best each time. I really didn't start racing until I'd been running for at least a year, probably even more than a year. And in that time, oh, you guys, we're well over a mile. We're about 10 minutes in which is just about where I think we would hit the first mile. In a distance like this, where we're trying to get faster as we go, that first mile you really do want about 15 to 20 seconds slower than your goal pace. The second mile you want to hit goal pace or a little faster, and then the third mile you want to hit a little faster than that. So we really are going to kind of think about picking it up now, really moving those arms, moving those feet, you're doing an awesome job. Now I'm kind of assuming that if you're running a 5K in 30 minutes with me, that you've probably been running for a little while, that maybe this isn't the first time you've gone this distance or the first time you've tried to do this pace. And maybe you're just taking me along for company <laughs> while you're doing your own pace and your own distance, which is awesome. I love to hear stories about you killer bees when you do that. But I'm assuming, since you are tackling this month, this March to 10K, that, that it's on your mind to kind of think about getting better, getting faster, and running strategically. For me, that took at least a year before I really thought about how I was running, before, before I had any control over it. And honestly, it still took me another like two years before I had real control over it, before I truly understood the points of training that you need. You know, you don't just, you don't just go out and run. <laughs> I know that sounds funny. It's running, of course you do. But each and every run of your week actually has a goal, it has a focus. Sometimes you are deliberately running slowly, which sounds so crazy. It's called a recovery run. And it's super important, especially if you run regularly, you know, four or five, even six times a week. Again, I wouldn't suggest six times a week or honestly even five times a week. If you're relatively new to running, that's a great way to injure yourself. But if you're running four times a week, you should be just about at that point where you're thinking about why you're running each day, like what you're going to get out of it. Each day should have a goal in much the same way that you know, your other training, you know if you're picking up dumbbells that you're working on strength. You know if you choose a HIIT workout that you're working on cardio, you're working on lung capacity, you're working on speed and quickness. So each run that you do has a goal like that too. Sometimes you're working on speed. Like today, we're working on pacing. Sort of speed, but sort of just control. You know, starting off at a relaxed pace and then moving into a faster pace, that's, that's not just running fast, that's running with control. We're thinking about speeding up as we go. In fact, speaking of that, how are you doing? How's your speed feeling? This is just about the time 
we're 13 minutes in. At a lot of 5Ks, this is about when they would have a water station. So if you'd like to take a really quick little walking break, five, 10 seconds, now is a great time to do it. Grab a sip of water and then we'll get right back to it. I will tell you that you are not going to lose much in the way of your pace or your time by stopping and walking through a water station. I have tried numerous times in my life. If you've been around the Paula Beach channel, you know, I'm not super coordinated and I'm not great at grabbing a cup and splashing water in my mouth and not choking while I'm running. So I will always walk through a water station, take a couple of seconds to be able to swallow and not choke because I lose way more time when I'm trying to choke down water. But taking that little bit of time to stay hydrated and kind of get your heart rate down for five to 10 seconds is actually probably gonna help you run your second half of your 5K faster. So don't worry about, don't worry about taking little breaks. You know, a lot of times people will talk to me about how, oh, you know, I haven't really run a 5K unless I run the whole thing. Not true, not true at all. I frequently take walking breaks. It's just part of the game. If you are going to lose more time by getting exhausted and not letting your heart rate come down a little bit and not taking in some kind of hydration, then you're going to lose way more time from, from being stubborn, frankly. So take the time and walk through a water station. Walk right now if you need to. Grab your sip of water and then get right back to it. Getting right back to it quickly is the key here. You don't want to just meander, you know, for a minute or so. If you're meandering for a while, yes, you will lose a little bit of time and you might miss the time goal that you were aiming for. But if you are getting back to it quickly and taking care of your body's needs, taking care of hydration, taking care that your heart rate isn't out of control, you will perform so much better. There is no good reason to be stubborn <laughs> while you are running. And trust me, I have learned that the hard way. I've learned that the hard way, not just with running, but like everything in my life. I'm incredibly stubborn. <laughs> I always think I know best until I figure out that I don't. <laughs> And if you are planning on training for a whole 10K with me this month, I will tell you that hydration is really important. I have been running long enough that I, I run six miles very regularly. I don't generally need hydration for six miles, but when I very first started running, I needed hydration for everything. I needed hydration for a mile. Your body's needs will change over time and you can train yourself to drink a little bit less up to a certain point. Um, I don't really drink, I don't really, I'm trying to think of that way or it is. It kind of depends, depends on what I'm training for and it depends on whether or not I'm gonna go longer. In general, when I'm in the middle of marathon training, I take hydration on every single run, down to two, three, four miles. I take my hydration with me because for a marathon, I have to drink, I have to drink a lot. So I'm training my body to be used to drinking all the time. Right now, in my own personal training, I'm training for shorter distances, I'm training for 5Ks and 10Ks. So the longest I'm running for my long run is like eight to 10 miles. And I don't generally need any kind of liquid for that distance when I'm training for something shorter. Again, I've been running for 10 years so I've trained myself to be able to do different kinds of hydration based on what my ultimate goal is, based on where I am in my training cycle. You, if you are just starting out, should always err on the caution of drinking too much. It's important to drink. It's important not to get dehydrated. Your performance will suffer almost immediately if you are dehydrated going into a run or during a run. And if you're relatively new to exercising, relatively new to running, you're probably sweating a lot. I know I actually still do, I sweat a lot. So I'm really careful about not just water, but I actually drink an electrolyte drink. And I have a couple of them that I use, not really recommending one thing over the other. But I do really like to replace my salts because I'm a very salty sweater. And so I know that that's really important for me and my performance. If I wanna do my best, 
I really have to be replacing that. You guys, we are just about two miles in. I know, we don't have much longer. So this is the point after you've had that little water break where you're thinking to yourself, okay, what do I have left? Yeah, what do we have left? We have 1.1 mile left, more or less. So, so what are we thinking about? What are we thinking about that last mile of a race? Well, I tell you, most of the time, the last mile of a race, I'm thinking about not dying. <laughs> Generally speaking, the last mile of any race, you want to be at just about your top speed. I know you're tired. I know you've been working hard to get this far, but this is why we started off conservatively because I want you to have something left, not just for the last mile, but definitely for that last point one. Because when you come around that corner, because it's always a corner, I swear, it's always a corner and it's really exciting. You see your three mile mark and you can maybe see the finish line 0.1 of a mile away. It's really exciting. And you really wanna make sure that you've got a little something left so that you can sprint it in, so that you can race right past that person that you've been chasing the whole time, so you can finish strong, you can finish with your hands in the air. So this mile, we're thinking about running fast. We're thinking about running basically as fast as we can. At this point, we've given almost everything we have. So we're really thinking about holding tight, staying strong mentally. You know, this is, this is the real strategic part is that, you know, the first mile, you've still got two miles to go. <laughs> the second mile, you're like, okay, I'm barely halfway. The third mile, you're almost done. It's time to go. So you've got to stay strong with your speed. You've got to stay strong with your plan. You've got to stay strong and really think about giving everything you've got. This is the exciting part of the race. This is the part that's arguably even harder than getting started. You know, when we got started, it was, there might have been some race nerves, you know, if you haven't raced very much, or even if you have, I still get nervous before every single race. But there was also just that, that settling in, finding your place in the crowd, figuring out who's running next to you, who you're gonna be able to pass, who's gonna pass you. The last mile, you're running with people who are more or less running your pace. These people are your real competition. If you, <laughs> excuse me, speaking of joking, these people are your real competition if you choose to be competitive about it. These are the people who are just about your speed. And this is why in the last mile, I really do like to pick one or two people that are just a little bit outside my reach. And I like to see if I can catch them. I frequently cannot, but sometimes I do. And it's very exciting and exhilarating to be able to do that. We've got yeah, we've got less than a mile to go. So let's stay strong. How are you feeling? This is a good gut check time. How are your legs feeling? How are your lungs feeling? Your legs can handle more than you think. Your legs, unless you are having sharp pains, if you're feeling like a regular amount of like, oh, this hurts, oh, this is hard, oh, I'm tired, push through that. You can totally push through that. It's your lungs that are gonna make the difference here. Your lung capacity takes a while to adjust. It really does. It can take, depending on how old you are, if you're super young, it doesn't take long at all. It takes a couple of weeks to just kinda of get that lung capacity right where it needs to be for as many miles as you wanna go. If you are my age, it takes a while before your lungs can handle this kind of work for this kind of duration. Your lungs, are the thing that are going to make or break your race. And that's exactly why we started off conservatively. Because your lungs needed time to expand, your lungs needed time to adjust, and your lungs need weeks or months of this kind of work before they're gonna be able to do anything more than this. And I mean speed, not necessarily distance, but both. Your lungs take longer to adapt than almost anything else. Your muscles are ready, they totally are. And your lungs are ready, but, but your lungs are the thing that you're really gonna feel. You need oxygen to perform well. The reason that your legs get tired 
is because they're not quite getting enough oxygen. Your muscles can handle the fatigue, but when they are not getting as much oxygen as they're used to and should be getting, that's when you start to feel a lot of those aches and pains. That's when your brain starts to say, I can't handle this, this is too hard. So think about controlling your breathing, making sure it's rhythmic, making sure you're not chatting as much as me. <laughs> you know, I've been doing this a long time. I've got the lung capacity to talk and run. When I first started, oh my goodness, there was no way I could have talked like this while I was running. Not even like a little tiny bit. I was lucky if I could get out one or two words. This is something that has taken me years <laughs> to develop. You guys, whoo wee. We're about two and a half miles in. We've only got about five, maybe five and a half minutes to go. I'm actually having a little bit harder time reading my watch than I was hoping for. Next time I will change the display so it's really big numbers. <laughs> I, don't really, I don't really watch the time very much on my own runs. On my own runs, I know how far I'm going when I run like out in the world or even on the treadmill. So I'm used to thinking about distance. I know where my turnaround is. I know my route. I know where I'm going to go. So I don't pay a whole lot of attention to how much time it's taking me. Unless I have to get home and get my kid off to school or something like that. Sometimes I'm watching the time, but most of the time I'm thinking about speed and distance. So today with these tiny little numbers, I'm really having to think about it. I'm having to work today too. You guys, we are finishing strong. You have done such a great job. This, this finishing part here, this last half mile, third of a mile, quarter of a mile, this is your reward. I know it hurts. I know you're giving everything you can, but I will tell you that that actually is the reward. When you finish something really strong, when you cross a finish line, even if it's just in your living room, even, even if it's just me saying, hooray, we did it, which I'm going to in about four minutes, when you know that you gave your best, when you know that you ran as hard as you could, as long as you could, and did everything you could, that is the reward. That's even better than a medal, it's better than a finish line, it's better than a t-shirt, it's better than, well, no, it's not quite better than all your friends congratulating you and saying, wow, I can't believe you did that, because that is so cool, <laughs> and you might, just, you know, for your own sake, take a little selfie today and put it on Facebook and be like, dude, I ran a 5K in under 30 minutes, because that's kind of a big deal. And you guys, we are, whoo, we are three minutes from being able to say that. So, let's kick it up. Three minutes means that that three mile sign is in sight. It means that that last girl that you have been chasing, who's wearing those shoes that don't quite match her pants, and they've been bugging you this whole time, that means it's time to pass her. Because you know what, you're faster than her. You really are, you've been working for this. You've been doing great this whole time. Let's get your arms moving. Let's kick those feet up a little bit further. This is a sprint. This is, well, it's a long time for a sprint, but this is finishing super, super strong. This is giving it that last little bit of everything you've got so that when you cross the line, you know you gave it everything. Still breathing really rhythmically. If your heart and lungs feel like they're going out of control, well, you just tell your heart and lungs that they got two minutes left and they can totally do anything for two minutes. <laughs> I promise. Hands are really moving now. You'll find that the more you pump your arms, the faster your feet can go. It's kind of funny how that controls it, <clears throat> but your body is just working together. Your feet, your feet are tired, your legs are tired. Let your arms do some of the heavy lifting here. We're coming around that last corner, you guys. We're coming around. You can see the balloons. You can see the timing clock. Oh man, and if you can see that timing clock, you know that that number still starts with a two. Unless you were really far off the starting line. I will tell you, while we're sprinting to the finish here, sometimes I start kind of far back 
because I do want to have such a conservative start, that the finishing clock doesn't tell me anything near what I've actually run. You have to check the results later to find out what you've actually run because sometimes it's very different from what the clock says when you're crossing over the finish line. Depends on how big the race is. I've done some very big races and some very small races, you guys. We are 29 minutes in, and that means the final minute, I'm gonna stop my watch at 29.59, because that, my friends, is a 5K under 30 minutes. You are rocking. So proud of you. Whew. 40 seconds. Giving it what you've got. Put a smile on your face. There's usually a photographer at the finish line. Maybe it's somebody in your family. Maybe it's just you <laughs> taking a selfie. That's okay too. Here we go. We're at 29.30. <sighs> that means we've got less than 30 seconds left. About 20 seconds. <sighs> I know this was a long finishing sprint. I'm so proud of you. You worked hard for this today. <sighs> Here we go, 53, 54, 57, 58, and finished! Ah and that's the important part. You gotta stop your watch. If you're using a watch or an app or something, I know it ruins your finish line picture, but you gotta stop your watch so that you know, you know that you did something amazing today. Oh my gosh, you guys, 5K in 30 minutes. You are a rock star, and I really, really hope that you had a great, great time with this workout. If you did, I would love it if you would give the video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment. I really do like to help you, especially if you are relatively new to running. I love to answer running questions. This is something I do because I love it. So please feel free to leave me a comment, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.